Hello class, good to see you again. You know the drill, we did the book, now it's time for the workbook. This is part 1A, questions and answers. Part 1, question formation. Right or wrong? I need you to correct the mistakes in the highlighted phrases. And if they are okay, you just put a tick. All right? We have about 10 sentences. I need you to stop the video, take your time, and do it yourself. For example, look. Number one. Have you ever been to Thailand? Yes, a couple of times. Why didn't you tell me the truth? It's okay, so it's a tick. Yes, take your time. And if you have done it, check your answers with your partner. Compare your answers. Learn from each other. Help each other grow. Right? Very good. Now, let's do it with me. Number three, let, let's look at the question together. It's wrong. Where do you usually go on vacation? We usually go to Mexico. Number four, haven't you done the homework? It's okay. No, I haven't. I'm sorry. Number five, what happened at the meeting yesterday? All right, very good. We discussed the sales figures. It was kind of boring. Number six. Who's Jack going out with? So it's okay. There are no problems. He's going out with his best friend's sister. Number seven. Let's look at the question. It's wrong. How long have you been learning English? For about three years. Number eight. It's okay. Whose jacket did you borrow for the wedding? My dad's. It was a little big for me. Number nine, excuse me, can you tell me where the bathroom is in direct questions to be more polite? Do you remember? Yeah, it's down the stairs on the right. And the last one, who are you waiting for? I'm waiting for my brother. Very well, you did very good on the first gig, of course. It continues. Follow me. Let's get to it. Number one. Where does Natalie live? So this is the direct question, right? When do we use indirect? When we want to be polite, all right? We want to speak in a very good manner, all right? So the indirect mode is, I wonder where Natalie lives, all right? Number two, where is the elevator, okay? Could you tell me where the elevator is? Where did we park the car? I can't remember where we parked the car. Number four. Are there any tickets left for the concert tonight? Do you know if or whether there are any tickets left for the concert tonight? What time does the game start? Can you tell me what time the game starts? And number six. When's Anna's birthday? Can you remember when Anna's birthday is. All right, so I helped you with this one, but next one is your turn. Let's get to it. Your challenge begins. You're going to look at the pictures, use the words, and write the questions. I'm not going to help you with this one. All right, so take your time, stop the video, and do it yourself. All right, for example, look at the first one. When your brother passed his driver's test and the picture, driving school, yeah? So, when did your brother pass his driver's test? Very good. Take your time. And if you have done it, check your answers with your friends. Let's do it together. Number two, who cooks in your family? Number three, how long did you spend in Brazil last summer? Number four, do you know who's going to the party? Number five, can you remember where I left my keys? Number six, what makes you angry? Number seven, who drank the milk I left in the refrigerator? And the last one, how long does it take to get to Boston from here? Well done, you never cease to amaze me. That's all there is to it for the questions. Time for my favorite part, reading. Everybody, I need you to read the article quickly 
and match the titles, the headings to the paragraphs. We have A, B, C, D, E. All right? Take your time and do it yourself. I'll be waiting for you. A few moments later. Great. Now let's read it together. All right? Most common interview mistakes. A job interview is a nerve-wracking experience at the best of times. So it's important to prepare for it well. Arriving late is sure to ruin your chances as is dressing inappropriately. And do not dream of answering your phone during the interview. Read on for five more common blunders and how to avoid making them. All right, number one, what is it? Tell me. Yeah, D, bringing a drink with you. This is a highly unprofessional habit as it suggests a serious inability to manage your time. Surely you could have planned your schedule better to include a coffee stop beforehand? Having a cup in your hand creates the opportunity for distraction. You might fiddle with it or miss a question while taking a sip of coffee. Worse still, its contents may end up on the desk, which will result in the interview, interviewer remembering you for all the wrong reasons. As for number two, E. Ignorance of the company. In this age of technology, it is inexcusable not to know anything about your prospective employer. Most company websites these days have an About Us section giving company history, locations, divisions, and a mission statement. Do some re research before the big day and you won't be stumped if the interviewer asks you a question about the place where you theoretically want to work. All right, very good. Number three, it's B, talking too much. An interview is a professional situation, not a personal one. So the interviewer will not want to hear your life story. While you need to answer all the questions you are asked, your responses should be focused and to the point. So you have to be very direct. Don't get sidetracked and talk about your home life, your partner and any children you may have. Save this for the first day on your new job when you are getting to know your colleagues. All right. And as for number four, A, criticizing past employers. It is important to maintain a positive attitude throughout the interview, even when discussing things that have gone wrong. Don't let the interviewer know that you want to leave your current job because you can't stand your boss. Saying unpleasant things about your colleagues is not a good idea because the interviewer might know them. Also, you will be showing him how, to, how you will speak about his company if you leave on bad terms in the future. Yeah, that's very important. And the last one, it's C. Doubts about your resume or your CV. Not being familiar with your past history of employment creates a very bad impression. It suggests or suggests that either you have a very bad memory or you made up some of the facts. Make sure you know the basic information by heart because the interviewer is sure to ask you about it. If you really do have a bad memory, take a copy to refer to, but do not appear to be reading it out loud. All right, very good. You did great. Now, as for the first part, all right. But I have another thing for you. There were some highlighted words. I need you to take your time and match them to their definition. Again, this is on your part. A few minutes later. All right. Now let's do it together. Number one. That cannot be forgiven. Inexcusable. Number two. Connected with what is being discussed. Focused making you very nervous or worried, nerve-wracking, stupid mistakes, blunders, be unable to answer a question, stumped, number six, from memory, by heart, number seven, start talking about something less important, get sidetracked, drinking a very small amount of liquid at a time, sip, dislike very much, can't stand and play with something because you're nervous, fiddle. And that's all there is to it. 
for the reading part. You made me proud. Part three. Pronunciation, friendly intonation. We covered this in the book. But for now, I need you to listen and complete the questions. All right, let's do it. File 1A, pronunciation B. One. What kind of music do you like to listen to? Two. Which college did you go to? Three. Have you ever worked in an office? Four. What are your ambitions for the future? Five. Would you like to work abroad? Six. How many languages do you speak? Very well, my friends. And you can listen over and over and repeat as many times as you want until you get it right. Let's go. And this is the last set for today. Listening. I need you to read the job ad, the advertisement, all right? And listen to an interview for the job. Is the applicant successful or unsuccessful? Easy question, right? So look, current vacancies, employer, Park Hotel, New York City. Job receptionist, contract temporary, hours full time, salary, $2,200 per month. All right, listen and answer. File 1A, listening. Hello, Mr. Bridges? Yes, hello. I'm Stephen Bridges. Good morning. My name's Jenny Howarth. Nice to meet you, Ms. Howarth. Would you like to get some coffee before we start? Oh, no, thank you. All right, please come in and take a seat. Thank you. You had no trouble finding us this morning, then? Yes, it was easy. I took the subway to 42nd Street, and then I walked. It's a beautiful morning. Yes, it is. So you're here for the position of hotel receptionist, is that right? Yes, that's right. I saw your ad on the Complete Jobs website, and I decided to apply. You know that this is only a temporary position, don't you, Mr. Bridges? Yes, I do. And that's ideal for me. I'm moving across the country in three months, so it fits in perfectly with my plans. Really? Where are you going to go? Well, I just graduated from college with a degree in modern languages, and I'm going to graduate school to work on a master's degree in California in September to study applied linguistics. My cousin lives there, so I'm going to stay with him, which I'm really looking forward to. We get along really well, and he knows all the best restaurants to visit. He's been living in California for a couple of years now, and I've been to see him a few times. Yes, well, back to you, Mr. Bridges. Have you had any experience working in a hotel reception? Yes, I have. Last summer, I spent a month at Fiesta Hotel in Playa del Carmen. My Spanish improved a lot while I was there, and I also learned a lot about customer care. Some of my colleagues were a little bit difficult sometimes, but in general, we worked well as a team. I see. You mentioned Spanish, Mr. Bridges. Which other languages do you speak? I speak Spanish, French, and a little Italian. From my research, I believe most of your guests are from South America, is that right? Yes, but we also have some customers from Asia, mainly Japan. Do you think this would cause you any difficulties? Not at all. I'm a good communicator, so we would be able to understand each other. Tell me how you would deal with a difficult guest, for example, someone who thinks there is a mistake with the bill. I don't think I would have much of a problem. I would speak English with them, very slowly if necessary, and I would use a lot of actions to explain what I wanted to say. If there was a problem with a room number or a price, I would write it down for them. I'm sure I'd be able to make myself understood. 
I'm very friendly and professional, so I'd have no problem making customers happy. Okay. Can you tell me a little more about your experience in Playa del Carmen? What were your duties there? Well, I was assistant receptionist there, which meant that I had to deal with the guests who were checking into and checking out of the hotel. I didn't have to make phone reservations. The head receptionist dealt with that. I read on your website that you only have one receptionist on the desk at any one time. Is that right? Yes, we're just a small hotel, so you would have to deal with guests in person and on the phone. Would that be a problem for you? No, not at all. I mean, I haven't used a reservations program before, but I'm sure I'd pick it up really quickly. I'm very good with computers. Yes, the program is very easy. So, Mr. Bridges, why do you think I should hire you and not somebody else? Well, I think I have the right skills for the job. I'm a very reliable and efficient person, and I've had some experience in the field. I can also use my language skills to communicate with the foreign guests. The position is for a limited amount of time, which suits us both. Basically, I think that I'm perfect for the job, and the job is perfect for me. That's fine, Mr. Bridges. One last question. When can you start? Mm. Nice, very good. So I personally believe that he was successful. Yeah, he read, he read the website. He answered all the questions very well. He had experience. All right, not bad. Now, I need you to listen again and look at the list of common interview mistakes. All right, for example, bringing a drink, talking too much, criticizing past employers or for example uh, ignorance of the company or doubts on his resume all right and circle the mistake that the applicant makes he makes a mistake listen again and find the mistake for me let's go file 1a listening hello mr bridges yes hello i'm stephen bridges Good morning. My name's Jenny Howarth. Nice to meet you, Ms. Howarth. Would you like to get some coffee before we start? Oh, no. Thank you. All right. Please come in and take a seat. Thank you. You had no trouble finding us this morning, then? Yes, it was easy. I took the subway to 42nd Street, and then I walked. It's a beautiful morning. Yes, it is. So you're here for the position of hotel receptionist, is that right? Yes, that's right. I saw your ad on the Complete Jobs website and I decided to apply. You know that this is only a temporary position, don't you, Mr. Bridges? Yes, I do. And that's ideal for me. I'm moving across the country in three months, so it fits in perfectly with my plans. Really? Where are you going to go? Well, I just graduated from college with a degree in modern languages, and I'm going to graduate school to work on a master's degree in California in September to study applied linguistics. My cousin lives there, so I'm going to stay with him, which I'm really looking forward to. We get along really well, and he knows all the best restaurants to visit. He's been living in California for a couple of years now, and I've been to see him a few times. Yes, well, back to you, Mr. Bridges. Have you had any experience working in a hotel reception? Yes, I have. Last summer, I spent a month at Fiesta Hotel in Playa del Carmen. My Spanish improved a lot while I was there, and I also learned a lot about customer care. Some of my colleagues were a little bit difficult sometimes, but in general, we worked well as a team. I see. You mentioned Spanish, Mr. Bridges. Which other languages do you speak? I speak Spanish, French, and a little Italian. From my research, I believe most of your guests are from South America, is that right? Yes, but we also have some customers from Asia, mainly Japan. Do you think this would cause you any difficulties? Not at all. 
I'm a good communicator, so we would be able to understand each other. Tell me how you would deal with a difficult guest, for example, someone who thinks there is a mistake with the bill. I don't think I would have much of a problem. I would speak English with them, very slowly if necessary, and I would use a lot of actions to explain what I wanted to say. If there was a problem with a room number or a price, I would write it down for them. I'm sure I'd be able to make myself understood. I'm very friendly and professional, so I'd have no problem making customers happy. Okay. Can you tell me a little more about your experience in Playa del Carmen? What were your duties there? Well, I was assistant receptionist there, which meant that I had to deal with the guests who were checking into and checking out of the hotel. I didn't have to make phone reservations. The head receptionist dealt with that. I read on your website that you only have one receptionist on the desk at any one time. Is that right? Yes, we're just a small hotel, so you would have to deal with guests in person and on the phone. Would that be a problem for you? No, not at all. I mean, I haven't used a reservations program before, but I'm sure I'd pick it up really quickly. I'm very good with computers. Yes, the program is very easy. So, Mr. Bridges, why do you think I should hire you and not somebody else? Well, I think I have the right skills for the job. I'm a very reliable and efficient person, and I've had some experience in the field. I can also use my language skills to communicate with the foreign guests. The position is for a limited amount of time, which suits us both. Basically, I think that I'm perfect for the job, and the job is perfect for me. That's fine, Mr. Bridges. One last question. When can you start? Okay, very good. So what was the mistake? Do you have any idea? All right, check your answers with your friends. The mistake was that he was talking too much. Well, I have another gig for you. Again, you're going to listen. If you don't need to listen, you can just directly answer. But I have to play it for all the people in the program. So listen again and complete the sentences. All right? Let's, let's do it together. I'll help you with it. File 1A. Listening. Hello, Mr. Bridges? Yes, hello. I'm Stephen Bridges. Good morning. My name's Jenny Howarth. Nice to meet you, Ms. Howarth. Would you like to get some coffee before we start? Oh, no. Thank you. All right. Please come in and take a seat. Thank you. You had no trouble finding us this morning, then? Yes, it was easy. I took the subway to 42nd Street, and then I walked. It's a beautiful morning. Yes, it is. So you're here for the position of hotel receptionist, is that right? Yes, that's right. I saw your ad on the Complete Jobs website, and I decided to apply. You know that this is only a temporary position, don't you, Mr. Bridges? Yes, I do. And that's ideal for me. I'm moving across the country in three months, so it fits in perfectly with my plans. Really? Where are you going to go? Well, I just graduated from college with a degree in modern languages, and I'm going to graduate school to work on a master's degree in California in September to study applied linguistics. My cousin lives there, so I'm going to stay with him, which I'm really looking forward to. We get along really well, and he knows all the best restaurants to visit. He's been living in California for a couple of years now, and I've been to see him a few times. Yes, well, back to you, Mr. Bridges. Have you had any experience working in a hotel reception? Yes, I have. Last summer, I spent a month at Fiesta Hotel in Playa del Carmen. My Spanish improved a lot while I was there, and I also learned a lot about customer care. Some of my colleagues were a little bit difficult sometimes, but in general, we worked well as a team. I see. You mentioned Spanish, Mr. Bridges. Which other languages do you speak? I speak Spanish, French, and a little Italian. 
from my research, I believe most of your guests are from South America, is that right? Yes, but we also have some customers from Asia, mainly Japan. Do you think this would cause you any difficulties? Not at all. I'm a good communicator, so we would be able to understand each other. Tell me how you would deal with a difficult guest, for example, someone who thinks there is a mistake with the bill. I don't think I would have much of a problem. I would speak English with them, very slowly if necessary, and I would use a lot of actions to explain what I wanted to say. If there was a problem with a room number or a price, I would write it down for them. I'm sure I'd be able to make myself understood. I'm very friendly and professional, so I'd have no problem making customers happy. Okay. Can you tell me a little more about your experience in Playa del Carmen? What were your duties there? Well, I was assistant receptionist there, which meant that I had to deal with the guests who were checking into and checking out of the hotel. I didn't have to make phone reservations. The head receptionist dealt with that. I read on your website that you only have one receptionist on the desk at any one time. Is that right? Yes, we're just a small hotel, so you would have to deal with guests in person and on the phone. Would that be a problem for you? No, not at all. I mean, I haven't used a reservations program before, but I'm sure I'd pick it up really quickly. I'm very good with computers. Yes, the program is very easy. So, Mr. Bridges, why do you think I should hire you and not somebody else? Well, I think I have the right skills for the job. I'm a very reliable and efficient person, and I've had some experience in the field. I can also use my language skills to communicate with the foreign guests. The position is for a limited amount of time, which suits us both. Basically, I think that I'm perfect for the job, and the job is perfect for me. That's fine, Mr. Bridges. One last question. When can you start? All right, let's get this over with. Stephen Bridges went to the interview by subway and on foot. He walked. Number two, he wants a temporary job because he's moving across the country in three months. Number three, Stephen has a degree in modern languages. Number four, he worked in a hotel for a month. Number five, he can speak three foreign languages. Number six, most of the Asian guests come from Japan. Number seven, in his previous job, Stephen didn't have to make phone reservations. And number eight, Stephen thinks he has the right skills for the job. And we are done with this long, boring listening practice. And some words, as always, approach, approach, bizarre, Bizarre, job candidate, job candidate, crush, crush somebody or something, demanding, demanding, flustered, flustered, job seekers, job seekers, rather than, rather than, recruitment agency, recruitment agency, think on your feet, think on your feet. And as always, I need you to write sentences with these phrases. And at the same time, compare your sentences with your friends. Learn from each other. Share your experiences. And that's the practice for part 1A. Everybody, thank you for watching. As always, if you have a question, you can comment down below and I will get back to you. And I have also put the slides in the description part. And I'm really tired. I need to go to sleep. But I just want to tell you. As long as I'm alive, I'll teach you. You have one of the best teachers on YouTube on your side. So you're strong. Believe in yourself. Bye-bye.